Have you ever worked on a big project and noticed that development there was so much slower than in small projects? It was very hard to keep track of where things were and every time you'd make a change over here you'd accidentally break something over there. That's a sign of bad software design. That's why in this brand new Bits of Q series we are going to talk about software design. And in particular we will be talking about the so-called solid principles. The solid principles were invented by Robert C. Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. He is one of the authors of the Agile Manifesto, creator of the Clean Code series, and author of several books, including this one, Clean Architecture, a craftsman's guide to software structure and design. And in this book, he discusses these solid principles. So in a nutshell, what are these principles about? First of all, these principles are all about modules. And when I say the word module here, I'm not referring to some specific programming paradigm. I'm not referring to the new C++20 modules or modules in some other programming language. I'm really talking about the software engineering concept of a module. By following these principles, you'll not only learn how to divide your code into modules, but also how to design these modules to work independently from each other and allow you to make changes without impacting other modules. This is going to help you to make sure your code is easy to maintain, even if your project grows. First, the question of what to put in a module. Here, the single responsibility principle comes in. And no, this principle does not mean that a module should have only one responsibility. That's a common misconception, which we'll go into in episode one. Once you've figured out what's in your module, you have to decide on the interface of the module, which functions are going to be offered to the public and which ones are considered implementation details. Once you've made that decision, you have to decide how to divide these public functions among different interfaces. If you have two functions, should they go together in one interface or should they be split up among two different ones? Here the interface segregation principle comes into play. Now a properly designed module will be open to extension. You can easily add new features, but at the same time, it should be closed for modification. You cannot accidentally break things. This is where the open close principle comes in. Reusability is another important topic of software engineering. By following the Liskov substitution principle, you can make sure that you can easily swap out one module for another if they have the same interface. For example, during development, your database module might actually just be some files on a file system. But once your project progresses and you get ready for a release, you might want to swap out this module for a proper database system that uses an SQL server in the background. If you've been following the list of substitution principle, you can make this swap very easily. As a matter of fact, if you've been following good software engineering principles, you might be able to pick up that SQL module from a different project and put it in yours. Okay, so now you have a bunch of modules, they have nice interfaces, they are reusable, they're easy to extend, but of course a module by itself doesn't do much. A system consists of many modules and these modules have to talk to each other. So there's going to be a bunch of dependencies between modules. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up with one big mess of spaghetti. This is where the dependency inversion principle comes into play. This principle teaches you how to chop up that spaghetti by putting interfaces in between these dependencies in such a way that you can make a change to one module without accidentally influencing the other. It's one of the key things to make sure that your project is scalable and you can keep on building on it without losing efficiency during your development. So, if you no longer just want to be some programmer, but really want to learn about software design, want to be able to reason about it, want to become a true software engineer, then this is the series for you. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you do so now, as the first episode will be airing soon. I'll see you then.